Hello all, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Olivia Hope. I'm a culture coordinator for the City of St. Catharines. And we are very excited to present to you Soft Balls, an exhibit presented by Studies in Arts and Culture and Visual Arts at Marilyn I. Walker School of Fine and Performing Arts. We begin this opening with a land acknowledgement. We would like to acknowledge that the land on which we meet today is a traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper, Treaty, Upper Canada Treaties and is with the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is the home of many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Acknowledging, acknowledging this is a reminder that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendships of Indigenous peoples. <clears throat> now, before I move on to, on to introductions, I would first like to share a brief description, which was provided by the curator. The hallways of City Hall lead us from busy streets to busy meeting rooms and offices. This exhibit imagines that they also offer visitors a restful transitional space. The, meeting, the paintings on display use soft floral and figurative patterns that are both complex and soothing, creating relaxed, pleasant atmosphere, inspired by decorative art practices. They're intended to suggest a meditative and carefree environment and are accompanied by soft-spoken fragments of text. In a place where important, at times difficult decisions are made and where city life is shaped, the soft walls in the hallway invite visitors to enjoy a quiet, introspective moment while letting their eyes linger on the delicate structures and engaging color associations. I would now like to introduce the director of the Center for Studies in Arts and Culture at the Marilyn I. Walker School of Fine and Performing Arts and co-curator co of Soft Walls, Catherine Pereira. Thank you, Olivia. Co-curator Sean Surfas and I would first like to address our thanks to the city of St. Catharines for welcoming us in this space, with a special thank you to Olivia for her kind assistance during the long, complex process of organizing an exhibition in pandemic times. It was a challenge, but it worked. I am happy and grateful to be here today, and I am even more grateful to our students who created art and creative texts at a time when the university was online and live exchanges and conversations with students and professors became virtual. Organizing an exhibition in these circumstances is a bit unreal. We, the curators, never had a chance to meet with the participating artists, not even in hallways or between doors at the Marilyn I. Walker School of Fine and Performing Arts. The first time we saw the paintings, other than on images, was when we organized a hasty drop-off on the parking lot of the school downtown. It was raining. Our two artists brought us their paintings, covered, and I brought the paintings inside the building without even looking at them first. The authors of the creative text were also working in isolation, a strange condition when one thinks that the texts on the walls have a collective authorship. Each author contributed a few words to the piece. Then, of course, there are all these other factors, dates postponed every time new lockdown measures are implemented, installing the works in the absence of the curators because access needs to be limited to protect us from the virus. And of course, a virtual opening reception. Yet, we are here and we worked patiently to make this happen. In the end, all we want with this exhibition is to let our eyes rest on something quiet and worry-free 
to forget for a little while that this year has been tough and exhausting. Enjoy, these are soft walls. Thank you, Catherine. So the virtual opening will go as follows. I will call upon each artist to speak about their work for a few moments. After the artist has spoken about their work, we will then move on to the next artist and the pattern will continue like so. As the artist is speaking, I will also show a few images of, uh, of their work that they've created for this exhibit. So the first art pieces on display are by Hannah Holmes. Holmes worked on both with both acrylic and oil. The first work on display is an acrylic titled Flowers After Warhol. The next piece is an oil piece titled Tulips One. And the last piece on display is Tulips Two, an acrylic. I will now pass things over to Hannah. Thank you, Olivia. Well, of course, like everyone, I've been affected by a pandemic. Um, and although COVID-19 shut down the world, it couldn't shut down nature. Ironically, nature thrived as carbon emissions, litter, and human interference were reduced, while for the most part, we all stayed at home and struggled. Even during the lockdowns, thankfully, we were allowed to go outdoors for walks and some exercise, and hopefully many of us got to enjoy the plants and wildlife that are so abundant in our region. We live in the Garden City, after all. Uh, it is just as pretty as it sounds. However, our essential workers may not have had many opportunities to rest and recharge and take in some fresh air. Uh, they were too taxed with making tough decisions and keeping all of us functioning safely and smoothly. Now, especially that COVID has passed the one year mark, we've got the promise of summer and fewer restrictions on the horizon. And we all need a respite from the stress of the pandemic. The season is about to change. And I think we are all becoming even more restless and more anxious to return to normal, whatever that will be. Perhaps a momentary escape with a little art to enjoy and ponder over will be curative and uplifting. Art and nature are inextricably connected. I think back to the beautiful landscapes of Constable, Monet's water lilies, Van Gogh's sunflowers, the list goes on. So I thought, what better way to pause and reflect than by bringing some colorful flowers indoors to share with everyone? Well, to me, nothing says spring better than tulips. They're my personal favorite flowers and one of the first to pop up and signal that spring is here. They bring a feeling of new beginnings and hope, which I think we all could use right now. Um, also, given my interest in 20th century art, I immediately thought about Andy Warhol and his pop art flowers, and I was inspired to create a piece just for City Hall. Warhol's floral works are so much fun. I want it to be just as playful with my interpretation of his art. That's why I chose bright, cheerful colors and tried to keep it simple and fresh, just like spring and summer. There's nothing like sunny, vibrant colors to soften a white wall and invite everyone to stop and take a break from the drudgery of this pandemic. There is life after lockdown and it's finally within reach. And hopefully my flowers will remind everyone that happier times are on the way. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Our next artist is Lindsay Leverian who is presenting three artworks made of acrylic and gel medium. The three works are titled Bright Birdie, Sail, and Surf. Let's listen to Lindsay. Hi everyone. Um, so these pieces are, I usually work in realism. So these pieces were definitely a way for me to get a little bit more creative. Um, I like these paintings because they have a really nice balance between abstract elements like impasto and loose brushstrokes, but also include realistic figures in it. Um, it results in very interesting works, um, I think, that give off a very calm um, feeling to it. And honestly, like a different feeling than if it was just created in realism, like how I usually do it in. Um, for Surf and Sail, I would just kind of let my creative creativity flow. I would get a big clump of paint 
smudge it all over my canvas. And then from there, I would either leave it like I did with um, sale, or I would continue to manipulate the paint and shape it like I did with the wave and surf. Um, now, when painting the realistic figures, um, I think it creates a really cool illusion, kind of mimicking real life actions. Um, so I really like the balance of styles in these pieces. Um, Bright Birdie was my favorite. Um, I pulled up dried pieces of paint from my old palettes and then I glued them to the paper. Then I got um, colors um, that I painted, different shapes, all that on top of it that I think complemented it. Um, I didn't want the realistic figure of the bird to be too large or distracting, so I kind of wanted to hide him in the painting so that the viewer would have to come up close to kind of reveal the hidden birdie in it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just really like the process of these pieces and it's not something I usually do. And I really enjoyed the freedom of painting in this style. Awesome, thank you so much, Lindsay. Uh, lastly, I would like to introduce our two authors, Malcolm Gear and Maya, Maya Merriman, who will share their thoughts about their contribution to the collective text. Hello, Olivia. I'm a visual artist and a fourth year student. My contribution to sub walls is not a drawing or a sculpture, but instead written words fastened to the wall next to the art. The phrases are a response to a remarkable gathering of paintings, intending to transport the viewer into a relaxed and pleasant frame of mind. The paintings have inspired me to create imaginative narratives using some spoken words. While preparing my written responses, I recognized some necessary attributes to consider. And I realized the narratives must be quickly read and easily understood. I envision this project as an, an opportunity to write supportive phrases that link comforting thoughts to the paintings. Throughout the process, to remain on topic, I found myself continually returning to the images. The selection of words had to feel authentic and support the concepts of the exhibition and the phrases are meant to capture and awaken pleasant memories for the viewer. Art and artists contribute to the community in many ways, and one of them is to help us remember and share more pleasant days. It has been my goal that when the viewer sees the paintings with the text, a voyage begins for the imagination that creates curiosity and reflections. Thank you and stay safe. Hello everyone, my name is Maya, um, and I'm just going to explain a bit of my process um, in being able to create words that would go along with this text. So words aren't always the most evident part in an exhibition of this type, um, but in this case, I think it made a lot of sense. And so to begin this process, I considered the context of the exhibition, and I used the words used to describe the exhibition to begin. So um, I knew that as a writer, I had to create text that was soft-spoken, um, and I had to work with an imaginary narrative. Um, and then I considered the atmosphere that was trying to be creative, and words used to describe this was restful, pleasant, meditative, and lingering. And then I also considered my role in this context. So my role was not to provide answers to what the paintings meant, um, but to be a creator um, myself. Um, and so the next step of this was to look at each piece that was provided to us individually. And I went through each one and I brainstormed. So part of that was creating, was um, uh, looking at observations. So uh, for example, color dripping from white. Um, also finding key words such as peeling, cradling, peak. Um, and then I also started to come up with my thoughts and meaning based on what I was seeing. So examples of this were, I live within and look beyond, or it is not always happy, but there is hope. So these are some of the thoughts that came to me while looking at these pieces. From there, I began looking at, I, I began creating text. And so um, I chose the pieces that I was most inspired by. 
Um, and from there, I went yeah, individually and I went by each uh, piece. And so I tried to switch the perspective that I was using um, and vary my responses. So for example, one time I took the perspective of the bird in the painting, um, whereas other times I took the perspective of um, myself looking at the painting. Um, I also sat with the mindset of the exhibition and that informed um, the pacing that I was using, um, as well as the imaginative and poetry like tone. And so after we submitted our pieces, um, I knew that these were going to be edited down um, and, and put together with other pieces that my classmates had made. Um, and this made the approach a little bit easier because I knew that I could I could take the writing as the process and that even if some parts I didn't enjoy as much, they led me to some of the best thoughts that I had in the piece, which I hope were ones that were used or perhaps the parts I didn't like were liked by the curator and that's okay. But I didn't have to worry if there was a part that I didn't like because it was just part of the process. Um, so overall, I approached it as though it was like a stream of thoughts that I was having while looking at these pieces and that some of the words that were coming to mind were being captured and put on the wall to share with others. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Maya and Malcolm. And also another thank you to Hannah, Lindsay and Catherine for your participation and just being involved in bringing this exhibit to us at the City of St. Catharines. Um, and that concludes all of our works for this exhibit. It's uh, short and sweet and beautiful, and I think creates a really beautiful point and uh, gives the imagination something to wander on as they walk through the city hall. Um, but before we leave, I'd like to take a moment to also express my gratitude for the continued interest in community partnerships. These partnerships have and continue to cultivate opportunities to highlight and recognize St. Catherine's local emerging and established artists. Um, and with that said, I would also like to let our viewers uh, know about an upcoming exhibit. It's our 2021 City of St. Catherine's annual juried exhibit. This year's exhibit will be titled The Art of Resilience. Uh, and the exhibit aims to visually represent both how the arts are a source of support and connection, as well as an illustration of how we as a community have been able to adapt, adjust, and come together since the outbreak of COVID-19. Um, so we are asking for artwork submissions to this show to be sent in by Monday, June 21st, 2021. Um, it's open to local Niagara artists. If you'd like any more information on this, uh, on this juried exhibit, please check out stcatherines.ca slash exhibits or subscribe to our Culture Inc. newsletter at stcatherines.ca slash subscribe. Now to end this show uh, and this reception, I'd like to end it with a huge thank you to everyone for viewing, for your interest and support, to the Center for Studies in Arts and Culture and the Department of Visual Arts at the Marilyn I. Walker School of Fine and Performing Arts for your partnership, and to the exhibiting artists, both visual and written, for without you guys, this exhibit would not be possible. Um, so I truly, really appreciate all that you do. Um, and I hope that everyone has a great night and a safe and amazing weekend. So thank you.